determine the coordinates of the turning points of f okay so we have f of x which is equals to minus x to the power 3 plus 6x squared minus 9x plus 4. In order to find the coordinates of the turning points, we need to derivate and equate to 0. That is because the gradient at the turning point is equal to 0. So if we derivate f of x and equate to 0, then we're going to find the x values at the turning points substitute them into f of x and find the corresponding y value. So let's go ahead and do that. f prime of x will be equal to, so we just simply apply in the power rule here. We're going to get minus 3x squared plus 12x minus 9. All right, and then minus 3x squared plus 12x minus 9 is equal to 0. So if we divide throughout by minus 1, we're going to have 3x squared minus 12x plus 9 being equals to 0. Let's go ahead and factorize this. On the first bracket, you're going to have 3x. On the second bracket, we're going to have x. We want minus 12x as the middle term and minus 9 as the constant. Uh, the way of doing that is if we have 3x minus 9 and x minus 1 being equals to 0. Uh, here we're going to have x is equals to 3 and on the other side we're going to have x is equals to 1. Obviously 3x minus 9 is equals to 0, 3x is equals to 9, we divide both sides by 3, x is equals to 3. So these are the x value of the turning points. But we are looking for the coordinates so we need to substitute these x values into f of x. So we're going to have f of 3 being equals to minus 3 to the power 3 plus 6 multiplied by 3 squared minus 9 multiplied by 3 plus 4. This is equals to 4. And then on the other hand, f of 1 will be equals to minus 1 to the power 3 plus 6 multiplied by 1 squared, minus 9 multiplied by 1 plus 4. This is equals to 0. So the turning points, we have 3 and 4, 0 and, not 0 and 1, but a 1 and 0. So these two are our turning points. Right, let's go ahead and do 8.2. In 8.2, we're supposed to draw the graph of f and clearly label all the intercepts with the axis and any turning points. So turning points, we have our turning points. So that is covered. Let's now look at the intercept. Do we have the x intercept? Yes, we do. Uh, this turning point also serves as an x intercept because y is equal to zero. So the x-intercept, we have that covered. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the y-intercept. Do we have the y-intercept? We don't, but we can go ahead and find it. The y-intercept, so f of 0, we know that y-intercept x is equal to 0. We're going to have minus 0 to the power 3 plus 6 multiplied by 0 squared minus 9 multiplied by 0 plus 4. So f of 0 is just equals to 4. So yes, we have the turning points and we have all the intercepts. We can go ahead and sketch our cubic function. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. So let me just put my axis here and see what I can do. My y-axis and my x-axis. Okay, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. And then going up, we have 1, 2, 3, 4. Going down, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. Right, let's go ahead and plot our coordinates. Okay, let's take a look at the turning points. We have... 3 and 4, 
1 and 0. So when x is equal to 3, y is equal to 4. We have a turning point right there. And then when x is equal to 1, y is equal to 0. We have a turning point right here. Okay. Uh, the x-intercept, uh, let's take a look at the x-intercept right here. When y is equal to 0, x is equal to 1. So that turning point is also saving as an x-intercept. Okay. And then the y-intercept, when x is 0, y is 4. So we have a y intercept, okay? Uh, there's something I'm forgetting. There's another intercept here at x is equal to 4. Let me show you how that is coming about. f of x is also equal to, look at this equation here that they have factorized for us. x minus 1 squared multiplied by minus x plus 4. So obviously we have minus x plus 4 being equals to 0. So x is equals to 4. This is the other x intercept that we have. Okay. Let's go. Let's carry on and do the equation that follows. We are done sketching that graph. 8.3. Use the graph to determine the values of k for which minus x to the power 3 plus 6x squared minus 9x plus 4 is equal to k. We'll have three real and unequal roots. A very basic question. So we have f of x is equal to k. So f of x minus k is equal to 0. So we want to shift f of x such that we're going to have three real and unequal roots. Right now, by the roots, we mean the x-intercepts, by the way. Right now, we have two unequal roots. x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 4. Let me show you something. If we shift f of x downwards, then we're going to have three real and unequal roots. But then if you keep shifting it downwards, then we're going to have a problem. You can see that at this point, we have two unequal and real roots. So we need to shift our function downwards. We need to shift our graph downwards. But then we need the value of k to be between 0 and 4. If k exceeds 4, 4 is the local maximum. If k exceeds 4, then we will no longer have three unequal and real roots. And if k is less than 0, then we are actually shifting our graph upwards. Our condition is not going to be satisfied. So we need k to be between 0 and 4. Let's move to 8.4. So in 8.4, uh, the line g of x is equal to ax plus b is the tangent to f at the point of inflection of f. Determine the equation of g. So point of inflection. We can easily find the x value at the point of inflection. So let's do that first. So f of x is equals to minus x to the 3 plus 6x squared minus 9x plus 4. If we derivate this, f prime of x is equals to minus 3x squared plus 12x minus 9. So if you want to find the x value at the point of inflection, you have to derivate again and equate it to 0. If we do that, we're going to have f prime of x being equal to the second derivative, uh, minus 6x plus 12. We need to equate this to 0. So we're going to have minus 6x plus 12 being equal to 0. Minus 6x is equal to minus 12. x is equal to 2. This is the x value at the point of inflection. We can substitute this x value into f of x and find the corresponding y value at the point of inflection. If we do that, we're going to have f of 2 being equals to 2 minus 1 squared multiplied by minus 2 plus 4. This is equals to, so we have 1 squared multiply by 2 so we have 2 this is the point of inflection the x value is 2 and the y value is 2 
But this very x value, we can substitute it into f prime of x to find the gradient at that point. Because if we have the gradient at that point and g of x is the tangent at that point, then we're going to have the gradient of the tangent. Okay, so f prime of 2 will be equals to what we have minus 3 2 squared plus 12 multiplied by 2 minus 9. This is equals to 3. So g of x is equals to 3x plus b. We have the gradient at our point of inflection. In order to find b, we need to substitute our point of inflection of coordinates 2 and 2. If we do that, we're going to have 2 being equals to 3 multiplied by 2 plus b. b will be equals to 2 minus 6, which is equals to minus 4. So g of x will be equals to 3x minus 4. This is uh, the equation of g of x. The last question, 8.5, is quite easy to compute. We're looking for the value of theta, the acute angle formed between g and the x-axis in the first quadrant. The angle between g of x and the x-axis is the angle of inclination. And we know fully well that if we say tan of theta is equal to the gradient, it shouldn't be hard to find theta. So theta will be equal to tan inverse of 3. If you put that in your calculator, 71.57 degrees.